Hi, welcome back to our course on foundations for machine learning. We are continuing to learn mathematical foundations and especially within that linear algebra. In the future lectures, we'll of course be learning statistics, probability, etc. But this will be the last lecture where we will be covering basics of linear algebra meant for machine learning. In this lecture, I'm covering one of my favorite topics, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, the reason why this is one of my favorite topics is because the intuition for getting uh, intuition for understanding eigenvalues and eigenvectors is not really taught in the way this is taught in colleges. When I was learning this concept for the first time, it was definitely not introduced to me in an intuitive manner, but rather there was too much focus on mathematical aspects of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And for that reason, I immediately forgot this concept itself. And before even forgetting, I had a very difficult time understanding. In this lecture, we'll be trying to develop a very simple geometric intuition behind eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And of course, we'll be looking at this in the through the lens of linear transformations. So throughout this course, we have been looking at linear transformations, right? So just to recap, we looked at uh, a matrix as a linear transformation. If the matrix is a square matrix, it will perform linear transformation within that space. If it is a non-square matrix, it might transform a vector from let's say a 2D space into 3D space or from 3D into 2D. So the dimensionality might increase or decrease. We also saw that um, while matrix to vector multiplication is a linear transformation of a vector, a matrix to matrix multiplication is a compounded like a, a, a complex linear transformation where two linear transformations are applied back to back. And if you have a rotation transformation and scaling transformation, all you need to do is like multiply the vector, multiply with the matrix corresponding to rotation and followed by that uh, multiply with the matrix corresponding to, um, let's say, expansion or shear or whichever is your second transformation. In this lecture, we'll be looking at eigenvectors and eigenvalues from the point of view of transformation, linear transformation. And this will help us understand a simple geometric intuition rather than a mathematical framework alone. So mathematically, I'm sure you have you are familiar with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, most likely. If you have not heard of this, just uh, in simple terms, if you have A as a matrix acting on a vector x, Ax equal to lambda x. If you have something like this, here x is called as the eigenvector of matrix A and lambda is called as the corresponding eigenvalue. Now here A is a linear transformation which transforms the vector x but here, the transformation is happening such that the vector, or the original vector x that is being transformed is simply getting scaled and lambda is that scaling factor. So, although mathematically this looks simple and even to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, it's not that difficult. Exactly what does this mean geometrically is very difficult for most of the people to visualize. So, let's try to understand that. So, consider a linear transformation. Uh, represented in the form of a matrix, 2 by 2 matrix. So this transformation is happening in x, y plane. So you have a equal to 4, 2, 1, 3. 4, 2 is the first column, 1, 3 second column. In this case, this 2 by 2 matrix is a linear transformation because it transforms the vector v within 2D x, y space into another vector. So when this matrix multiplies with a vector, it transforms vector into a transformed vector, which I denote here as vt. So please note this output is not a scalar, it's a vector, right? So this V vector is getting transformed. So A is like a function. Now, I just want to spend maybe one or two minutes as a quick recap on linear transformation. This we have already discussed in previous lectures, but of course here we can cover it in, in one to two minutes. So if A is a linear transformation, then the first column of A represents where the unit vector I lands after transformation. The second column of A represents where the unit vector J lands after transformation. So here you can see that the unit vector I after applying this transformation called A will go to this, this place 4, 2. So 4, 2 represent the coordinate of the tip of the vector, but uh, we won't represent the vector by 4, 2 in this format because this is a coordinate but vector will be represented in the column format. So the new transformed I vector, I t, I will not put a, put a cap because this is not a unit vector. This is 4, 2. The new transformed vector j t is 1, 3. So 
Now A, what A is doing is A is transforming the entire XY space. It is not just transforming these unit vectors. It transforms every single vector in this XY uh, plane. However, for certain transformations, I am not talking about this particular A which I showed above, but for certain type of transformations, the only thing that can happen to certain vectors, not all vectors, the only thing that can happen to certain vectors is either squishing or elongation. So what that means is, imagine this transformation A is applied on some random vector V, which I draw like this. After applying this transformation A, imagine that the only thing that happens to this vector V is that either it increases in length like this or it gets squished. Maybe it's uh, and when, when it increases in length, it can also flip. The direction can flip. But at the end of the day, if V is getting transformed such that it still stays along this line, so V can either get multiplied by, uh, by plus 2 or it can get multiplied by minus 3 or minus 1 by 2. So it can get squished, it can get flipped the direction, in the direction it can get elongated. But all of those operations will make sure that V still remains along its line. And this line is called the span of that vector because that, that vector, if scaled by a scaling factor, will span along that straight line. When that happens, the vector V is called as an eigenvector of this transformation. And the scaling factor by which the vector V changes its length is called as the eigenvalue. So that is what I have written here down. So basically the vector V does not get thrown away from the span. The span is that straight line and it remains on that line. So such vectors are eigenvectors and the trans uh, of the transformation and the corresponding uh, values or the factors by which these vectors get uh, elongated or squished is called as the eigenvalue. So now hopefully when you look at this equation, you have a much more intuitive understanding. So here A is the transformation, X is the vector that is being transformed and after transformation, it becomes lambda x, where lambda is a scaling factor, it's a scalar. So whatever is the scaling factor lambda is called as eigenvalue. Whichever vector x, uh, for whichever vector x, A can do this, that is called as the eigenvector of the, tr of the transformation A. So this is the meaning. Now let's look at some specific transformations so that this idea is much more intuitive and, and clear to you. Consider shear transmission. We know shearing. Shearing is where something uh, has a like a rotation along this axis. So here if it's a block, the bottom part remains fixed, but this part can move. Now this shear transformation can be represented by uh, a matrix like this. And we can see why. So here, what happens to the unit vector i after transformation? This is what happens to unit vector i. Basically, this is where unit vector i lands after the transformation. And this is where unit vector j lands after transformation. So unit vector i lands at 2, 0. So this is 2. This is 1. So this is where unit vector i ends up. And unit vector I, j ends up at 1, 2. So 1, 2 is this. So this is 2. This is 1. Now, it's fairly uh, simple to understand in this particular example that all vectors along the x-axis is only, only getting elongated by a factor of 2. We can see that. So let's say a vector v equal to, um, I can say it's uh, maybe 3, 0. So this is a vector along the x-axis. So now what is a v? a v equal to 2, 1, 0, 2 multiplied by 3, 0, which is equal to 6. Uh, so this gets multiplied by 2 times 3, 6 plus 1 times 0. Then this is 0. And this equal to 2 times v because this is a, this is simply 2 times multiplied by this. So here you can see that a vector and, and this applies to any vector along x-axis. So we can see that by saying a v equal to 2, 1, um, 0, 2 times 3, 0 instead of this. Let's put x, 0. So this will be 2 x, um, 0 equal to 2 times x0. So here you can see that for any vector that aligns along the x-axis, it gets scaled up by a factor of 2. So here, uh, do you understand what is the 
eigen value in this case eigen value in this case is 2 because 2 is the scaling factor by which any vector aligned along the x axis is scaling so eigen value is 2 and corresponding eigen vectors are any vectors or all vectors aligned along the x axis so eigen vectors are there are infinite possible eigen vectors in this particular case all of them align along the x axis but there is only one eigen value which is 2 so this is how how you can visualize uh, eigen values and eigen vectors but what about some other random vectors? So let's say we take a vector aligned along uh, y axis instead of along x axis. So let's say it's 0, 3. Will this vector only get elongated? No. How do you know that? We can see. We can uh, prove it by simply doing the calculation. So 2, 1, 0, 2 multiplied by 0, 3 equal to 2 times 0 plus 1 times 3. So that is 3. 0 times 0 plus 2 times 3, 6. So this is 3, 6. It is not a scaling of this vector. It's a different vector altogether. So uh, this is why, you know, all vectors cannot be eigenvectors of a transformation. There are very specific vectors that form eigenvectors of a transformation. Now, let's come back to some mathematical things which you may be familiar with uh, when you learned eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Even if you don't know this uh, before, that's okay. So if A is a transformation, we can write ax equal to lambda x and this is the eigenvalue x is the eigenvalue and lambda is the eigenvector right now we can rewrite this such that you multiply this with a i i, I is an identity matrix so x you re rewrite as i x and with this you can bring this whole right hand side to the left hand of the equation and you can rewrite this as a minus lambda i which is a new matrix a minus lambda. and here obviously the dimension of i should be same as the dimension of a so if a is 2 by 2 i should also also be a 2 by 2 matrix lambda is a scalar lambda is not a matrix a minus lambda i times x x is a vector equal to 0 so here what's happening is this particular transformation called as a minus lambda i is squishing the entire xy space such that it's uh, the result is 0 and when can this happen? When can something get squished into zero? It's only when determinant of this uh, matrix is zero. We have discussed this already in the previous lecture, but I can uh, tell you once again why this is the case. So imagine that uh, this is the xy plane and this is the unit vector i, unit vector j. You can define a unit square here. This, this unit square has an area of one. Now, if we have a transformation, that transforms such that the unit vector i ends up over let's say here sorry j ends up over here and let's say i ends up over here so what are these coordinates um, so i will end up at 2 0 0.5 and j will end up at um, 1 sorry 0 0.5 2 right now we can see that if we draw a shape enclosing these two uh, vectors it is like a parallelogram not enclosing like these two vectors should be fo uh, forming the side of the shape it's a parallelogram now determinant of a transformation is nothing but the factor by which the area of the unit square scales so the original unit square had an area one but in this case the parallelogram will have certain area and what is that area that area is nothing but the uh, determinant of this transformation so in this case the determinant is 2 multiplied by 2 minus 0 0.5 square uh, so dit so in this case determinant is equal to 4 minus um, 0 0.25 right yeah so this will be 3.75 so here what this means is since determinant is a positive number and it is a, a higher number than 1 what it simply means is this unit square in blue gets scaled up in its area by a factor of 3.75 if determinant is negative it means these two axes are getting flipped so instead of this being the transformed i and this being the transformed j it can uh, it, it will get flipped and you can make it happen by simply exchanging the uh, the two columns so if you exchange the columns let's say the vector is like the matrix is like 0 0.52 uh, to 0 0.5 you can see that determinant is now negative 3.75 so dit of this is negative 3.75 and now here is the interesting case what if the determinant is zero then you can see that the entire space gets squished into a line or into a point so this dimensionality reduction results in determinant being zero and when can that happen that can happen when 
both of the columns of this transformation matrix are linearly dependent instead of linearly independent. And why is that the case? Why, why should I talk in the language of mathematics? Why not in, simply in terms of geometric? So let's say a transform, let's imagine a transformation where the i vector and j vector are landing on top of each other on the same line, right? So let's say a transformation may, uh, does something such that the i vector is over here. This is 2, 2, 2, let's say. So the i vector lands at 2, 2 and j vector, let's say it lands at uh, 3, 3. So, so this is the transformed i vector and the transformation is defined by this, right? So the first column is the transformed i vector. Second column is the transform j vector. So the transform j vector is 3, 3. Transform i vector is 2, 2. And you can clearly see that determinant in this case is 0. And why is it 0? It's because you cannot draw a parallelogram of finite area by using these two vectors. It's everything is such that the space entirely is squished into this line. Now, if you take any random vector uh, in the space and apply this transformation to that vector, that vector will also get converted, squished into this line. If you want a proof, I can take a random vector. So let's say x equal to 0 0.5 uh, and y equal to 2. Now let's apply this transformation. Ax equal to, uh, so I'm calling this vector as x, okay? Uh, so now this will be 2, 3, 2, 3 and uh, 0 0.5, 2, and this is equal to 1 plus 6, that is 7, and this is 1 plus 6, that is also 7. And now this 7, 7 can be represented as, now this is the transformed i, this is the transformed j, you can represent the 7, 7, this is also along the same line, because this line is something where x equal to y happens. So you can see that any random vector is also getting squished. So the entire xy space is getting squished into a single line. The, in this case, determinant is zero. Now, if determinant is zero, uh, now let's come back to our eigenvalue eigenvector, right? If if this transformation uh, transforms a vector into a null vector, in that case also determinant is zero, because a null vector can happen if the transformation is is, is squishing the entire thing into one point. So now, if the determinant of a minus lambda i is zero, we can write it in the following way, right? So um, let's say a equal to four, one, two, three. I'm taking an example transformation. And if determinant of a minus lambda i is zero, lambda i, I can write like this. This is lambda multiplied by i. Then if determinant of this is zero, I can expand this uh, expression. So four minus lambda multiplied by three minus lambda minus two, two times one. So this is equal to zero and ultimately this be becomes a quadratic equation. You can solve this quadratic equation and you can see that there are two values for lambda, five or two. So now these two are the values of the lambda. So what does this mean? It simply means that, uh, so I'm skipping the calculation here because it's fairly straightforward. I don't want to kind of elongate this video by going through the quadratic, e quadratic equation solution, fairly easy. But uh, I want to get to the point. The point here is that there are two eigenvalues here, 5 and 2. And for each of these eigenvalues, there are corresponding eigenvectors. Now, can we see what are those? So the equation is a minus lambda i times x equal to 0. So now what is a minus lambda? This is a minus lambda. And x is a random, uh, I'm defining a random vector, x, y equal to 0. So this is the zero vector, null vector. So uh, please uh, remember that this is a vector. Okay, this is not a scalar. Uh, although I have written it as zero, it's a null vector. So it should be uh, like a column. Now I can expand this four minus lambda x plus two y equal to zero x plus three minus lambda y equal to zero. Now in this equation, we have two unknowns and two equations. We can substitute the value of lambda. Lambda is not an unknown. Lambda we already calculated. So lambda first, let's substitute lambda equal to five. So we get minus x plus two y equal to zero plus uh, then the second equation is x minus two y equal to zero. So you will think that there are two unknowns and two equations, but in reality, you here you have two unknowns and only one equation because both of these equations are literally this saying the same thing. So in this case, the only conclusion you can get is x equal to 2y, which means there are infinite solutions. x equal to 2y can be satisfied by many, many, many pairs of x and y. This is a straight line along a straight line. And for lambda equal to 2, we can substitute to get two equations. First equation is 2x plus 2y equal to 0. Second equation is x plus y equal to 0. 
These are also exactly the same pair of equations. So you have two unknowns and one equation and here you will get x equal to minus y. This is also the equation of another straight line which is different from the previous one and in this case also there are infinite solutions. So there are infinite unique solutions, unique set of solutions for lambda equal to 5 and there is another infinite set of unique solutions for lambda equal to 2. When I say unique solution, I mean this. these infinite solutions are different from these infinite solutions. That's what I mean. Uh, so how does it look like? So if x equal to 2y is there, that is this line, right? So can we get an can we take an example? So let's say uh, take a vector v where uh, x is 2 and y is 1. Is x equal to 2y being satisfied? Yes, it is satisfied. Now let's uh, imp implement the transformation a v where a is nothing but um, this guy uh, 4 1 2 3 so 4 1 uh, 2 3 times 2 1 this is 8 plus 2 10 and 2 plus 3 5 this is equal to 5 times 2 1 so here lambda equal to 5 this is the first value of lambda that we calculated and this is the v itself right so if v is along this line this is where lambda equal to 5 applies now what about this line x equal to minus y let's take an example let's take another new vector where uh, x is 2 and y is minus 2 um, x is 2 and y is minus 2 okay this is fine so now let's apply the transformation a v uh, so 4, 1, 2, 3 multiplied by this vector 2 minus 2 equal to 8 plus minus 4 that is 4 then 2 plus minus 6 that is minus 4 so this is actually 2 times v and here lambda is 2 so this is also another value of lambda that we calculated earlier another eigenvalue so this line corresponds to eigenvalue for all vectors along this line ha is, is lambda equal to 2. So here in this particular case the transformation a equal to 4, 2, 1, 3 this transformation where I have drawn this square this transformation has two eigenvalues lambda equal to 2 and lambda equal to 5 but it has two different infinite set of eigenvectors. The first set of infinite eigenvectors lie along these this dotted line which is uh, y equal to sorry x equal to 2y right and the second set of infinite eigenvectors lie along this line which satisfies the condition x equal to minus y. So this is a, a really really good example to demonstrate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now I have maybe three specific examples. All transformations need not have eigenvalues and eigenvectors. A very good example for you to understand is rotation transformation in 2D. So if you have a vector a equal to 0, 1, minus 1, 0, this is a rotation transformation. Why? You can easily see that. So the first column is where the unit vector i lands, so that unit vector i comes here. The second column is where unit vector j lands after transformation, it's minus 1, 0. So basically this is the transformed unit vector i, this is the transformed unit vector j and clearly you can see that this is like a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation transformation. In this rotation, every single vector is getting rotated. There is not a single vector that will lie along its own span such that after rotation, you can represent the same vector as a scalar multiple of itself. It cannot happen. Uh, if you want proof, we can take any random vector and do the transformation. So the transformation is 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Let me take a random vector, let's say 3, 2. And uh, we can write this as 0 times 3 plus minus 1 times 2, which is minus 2. 1 times 3 plus 0 times 2, it's 3. So this is minus 2, 3. And you can see that this is not a scalar multiple of the original vector v. This is completely different. So rotation transformation does not have eigenvectors, eigenvalues or eigenvectors in 2D. However, in 3D, yes, it can have an eigenvector along the axis of rotation because the axis of rotation does not get elongated in 3D. If, 3D, if a 3D space is rotating along a certain axis, let's say z-axis, all vectors lying along the z-axis does not elongate or get squished. They will remain exactly the same. And in that case, eigenvalue along the axis of rotation will be 1. And eigenvectors will be all the infinite set of vectors lying along the axis of rotation. 
So those are the these two cases which which is about rotation. So let me just tick it. Now in shear case, in the case of shear, all vectors along x axis are eigenvectors, and the eigenvalue will be depending on uh, how much the shear is happening. So a shear, as we discussed, is nothing but something that makes uh, a body deform like this, right? So uh, let's say the x axis is getting elongated after shear a little bit and y axis is rotating such that it lands something like somewhere like this, 2, 3. So this is a shear. And why is this a shear? Because x axis is just getting elongated by a factor of 3. Because this first column is where i vector lands after the transformation. Second column is where j vector lands after transformation. Now, um, here what's the eigenvector? Any vector along x axis is an eigenvector and lambda eigenvalue is equal to 3. Uh, we can easily see that because if I take a vector v equal to let's say 9, 0, if you apply this transformation a to this vector, I can already see, I can already say without even doing the matrix multiplication that the result will be uh, 27, 0. But we can do it and uh, confirm it. So 9, 0. And here it will be 9, 3, so 27 plus 0, 27. And then this will be 0 times 9 plus 2 times 0. So this is 0. So this is 27, 0, which is 3 times vector v. So lambda is 3. Uh, so this is the shear. In shear, there can be one more eigenvector along another line. We can find that by doing um, determinant of determinant of 3 minus lambda 2, 0, 3 minus lambda. Basically, determinant of this matrix equal to 0, which means 3 minus lambda, the whole square, uh, equal to 0. In this case, actually, lambda equal to 3 is the only solution. There are, there are no two solutions. But for some transformations, we can definitely define, we can, we might have, uh, similar to what we showed above, there could be two, uh, set of eigen, two values of, two eigenvalues and two sets of eigenvectors. Okay. So that is this shear. Now let's discuss one last case of diagonal matrix. So here I want to discuss three things. All diagonal matrix for, for diagonal matrix, all diagonal values are eigenvalues. Uh, we can see that. So diagonal matrix is nothing but all values except those in the diagonal being uh, 0. So here, diagonal elements are 2 and 3. Non-diagonal elements are all 0. So here in this case, um, all the eigenvalues are 2 and 3. It's fairly easy to calculate because determinant of 2 minus lambda, 0, 0, 3 minus lambda. This should be 0. And this is a fairly simple equation, three, 2 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus 0 equal to 0. And you can see that lambda equal to 2 or 3 uh, is the solution. So for diagonal matrix, these elements themselves are uh, eigenvalues. It's also very easy to see when you look at this transformation, this diagonal matrix as a transformation. In this case, what is happening to the basis vectors uh, i and j? The first column is where the i vector ends up after transformation. So i vector is simply elongating by a factor of 2. The second column is where j vector lands after transformation. It is simply elongating by a factor of 3. So i vector is transformed, getting transformed by an elongation. j vector is tra getting transformed by another elongation. And the factor of those elongations are the eigenvalues. What are the eigenvectors? Again, fairly easy. Uh, in this case, all vectors aligned along the x-axis are eigenvectors. Also, all vectors aligned along y-axis are also eigenvectors in this case because um, as long as a vector is aligning along x-axis, the only transformation that it, it experiences is a scaling by a factor of 2. As long as a vector is getting uh, is, is aligned along y-axis, the only elongation that only transformation that happens is an elongation by a factor of 3. So that is the fourth point and fifth point. Now, there is one last interesting thing. So let's say you have a diagonal matrix like this. And if you are applying like a series of transformations or a cascade of these transformations, uh, it's fairly easy to calculate the result. So AX is nothing but this. So if A equal to, um, let's say A0, 0, 0, B, and let's say someone is asking you to calculate what is A raised to 100, then if you actually want to calculate by writing made the matrix multiplication like like 100 times, it's it's a painful process. 
But if you think of this in terms of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, it's fairly easy to calculate. So basically, um, so let's say a consider a vector x, x, y. Ax is nothing but Ax plus By. You can see this. Now, um, a, a x is a square x, x plus b square y because a 0, 0 b, if you are multiplying this with x y, uh, the result is a x b y. If you do this multiplication on this, then this a x and b y will become a a x and b b y, which is a square x b square y. And similarly, if you multiply 5 times, it will become a raised to 5x, b raised to 5y. So, And if you are multiplying by 100 times, which is, uh, so if you are multiplying 5 times, it's nothing but uh, a aligned like this, which is a raised to 5, right? So you are saying a raised to 5x equal to a raised to 5x, b raised to 5y, which means uh, these two should be the diagonal elements. So the diagonal element of this should be a raised to 5, 0, 0, b raised to 5. And what that says is a raised to 100 without even calculating, we can say that it is a raised to 100. The matrix is a raised to 100, 0, 0, b raised to 100. So you can say this from the property of uh, multiplying a vector used with a diagonal matrix. You are calculating a raised to 100 without actually doing the calculation. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. Uh, I just want to Take a moment to appreciate you for finishing this linear alg algebra module. In the next lectures, we'll be going into probability, statistics, and more uh, interesting concepts for which are relevant for um, machine learning. The great thing about mastering linear algebra is that you will be less afraid of looking at matrices from because matrices are now simply linear transformations. Otherwise, it's very difficult to imagine matrices geometrically. You will only think mathematically and it will almost always make you stop what you are learning in the middle. But think of matrices as geometric entities which perform transformations of vectors, then things will be easy. In machine learning, you will of course encounter matrix getting multi matrix multiplying with a vector which is transforming the vector. Most likely in uh, neural networks and other advanced machine learning concepts, these transformations will change the dimension of the vector. Um, and uh, when you when you encounter such situations, always imagine that you had already familiarized that in the linear algebra module. So if you have come this far in the course, uh, it's it's amazing that you have managed this much. And now in from the next lecture onwards, we'll be entering into uh, different modules other than linear algebra. So I hope you have really enjoyed the lectures so far. And if some concept is not clear, feel free to go back to those lectures and watch it again. If uh, if you need if you need more clarification on certain numerical concepts, you can find numerical examples or also you can reach out to us. And uh, if, if so far you have managed to understand without any significant confusion, I am sure the rest of the course will be much, much easy for you because usually students find linear algebra as the most difficult part of uh, mathematics meant for machine learning. So congrats once again. I will see you again in the next lecture with the start of a fresh new module. Thank you so much.